Hey there. So a lot of you guys have been asking me how I did some of these um, florals and how I'm using the brushes that I'm using in order to get these effects. So I thought I would jump on here on YouTube and let you know that one, I have a really cool course over on my website at JacquelineJacks.com that has a huge amount of florals, different florals that you can do as a beginner that are really super, super easy. So this is going to be um, a way to use these brushes to get some of these results. But if you want like a more really in-depth, uh, loose watercolor tutorial or class that you'd like to do over a few weeks, then be sure to join me over at JacquelineJacks.com because I think you'll really like the class and it's really fun, especially if you're trying desperately to loosen up your style, your watercolor style, which I think it sounds like many of you are, and that is exactly what I love to do. So as far as um, materials and colors, let's go through them really quick because I don't want to keep you too long. I want you getting painting. Um, basically, as far as rounds, I have usually on hand a round that doesn't require a lot of water that is like more it will give you more color a round that really sucks water i mean the princeton neptune is amazing right i love it for very loose lots of water kind of color and then um, the escoda all these the prado is kind of somewhere in between and so i tend to use this one a lot because it's in between but when i'm trying to do really loose like kind of sloppy work i will use the Neptune. Now I also got the Neptune in the dagger and this is the one that you guys have been asking me about so much because some of you say it's too floppy. You don't know how to use it. Some of you are saying you have your own daggers at home, but you you have no idea how to make these work for you and you're, they're really giving you trouble. So we're going to do that today. And then maybe a script brush is always good. I always keep it on hand to do, you know, like stems or just to add little dots, even if I just need to change a color really quick, that's in a detail, that's a really good thing to have. And then two flat brushes. One flat brush, again, by Elite, Aqua Elite by Princeton, which is this line here. I love this line. This doesn't require a ton of water. It's gonna be more concentrated paint. And then from the Neptune line, there's a three quarter Princeton square wash. And again, this whole tutorial is just one of the little tutorials that's going to be in the floral class. So you're going to get this one as well as um, just so much, so many start to finish paintings and demos. For colors, I mean, you can use any color, but I'm going to really quickly do some colors really fast, just because uh, I know you, you want to know a little bit more about color. So if you're going to use like a lemon yellow that is say extremely bright and extremely blue, right? Not like a warm yellow lemon to me is, is kind of like very, it's got like those green or blue undertones. Then you want to choose a red like Sennelier brilliant red. If you want these colors to mix because Sennelier brilliant red is kind of not as warm as some of the other reds. Um, and you want to make sure that you kind of like combine, you know, you look for colors that will work really well together and just kind of do this on a square sheet. That one, uh, by the way, is violet. It's really pretty. Uh, Quinn, Quinn magenta is always a great flower color to use. Um, cadmium red is another great flower color to use. So you're going to do a, a blue flower. Sennelier has a wonderful ultra blue that's amazing, right? There, but this isn't every color, like every paint, every paint company has it. So whether you're using um, White Knights, Mission Gold, I'm trying to think of Daniel Smith, whatever you're using, most of these are Sennelier, Schmincke, or Daniel Smith. That's pretty much what I exclusively use. Uh, great greens are anything in the 
you know, viridian range or the thalos make really great greens and you can see how they bleed so nicely to each other. So the point is just to kind of be familiar with mixing color and always test it all out, you know, like just see what it's going to do. Is it going to explode into something that you really hate? Um, if it should mix together, you know, when these things kind of hit each other, are you familiar enough with your colors? I mean, literally guys, I spend a great deal of time swatching my paints because I love them so much. And I don't want to forget about paints that really speak to me, you know, and that I love, I want to keep them in stock. And I just, I just need them close to me because I'm just very, very passionate about the colors that I use. So I would swatch and keep big sheets right next to where you paint so that you never lose sight of what it is that, um, that you're going to paint. So I guess let's start with this yellow one that you guys like so much. Um, it was kind of easy. And again, I used the dagger brush for it. So let's just grab a dagger brush. We're going to get it nice and wet. Um, this was actually done with, this one was actually done with nickel azo, which do I have that in my palette? I should Let me see. I think I'm out of it in here. Uh, maybe not. There's a little bit left. Let's get some. Okay. So I'm basically with a very wet, very floppy brush. You're going to die, right? It's really this simple. I'm not trying to draw. And this is what's happening with you guys. You're trying to draw in things. I'm just going to lay it down and see what happens is I literally am getting like a splayed effect and I'm keeping this center. Rinse out your brush, get just water. And now I'm just kind of going at it and creating these really, really rough things. Now you're going to say, Oh my God, that brush is too floppy for me. No, that's the thing is if you want to paint loose, you got to think of in terms of maybe even standing up your paint, your, um, your paper so that you can't really like do detail on it. So there we go. I literally have my flower pretty much already in, in check. Right? So now I'm going to take I can even take the same brush if I want to. I can take the this one because it's now I'm just going to use the tip at this point and I'm going to take a little bit of um, probably I don't know. Let's get a little bit of this orange. This is really nice. I usually use Aussie gold, which I really like. I think that is right there. So maybe I'll bring it back in. But while it's kind of wet, I'm just I'm going to just create some <laughs> stars like literally just little slashes and that's what this brush is really cool um for Where's my Aussie? it's just getting loose with it you know you can even lay it down like that look at how cool this is now this is the beauty of having a brush that is floppy it's not really structured because something else would be different you want a little more color let's really explode this out. Another way to do this is say you get a little bit lost and you're like, Oh my gosh, I have a soppy mess here. Just take a little bit of paper towel with crinkled edges and just start adding texture this way. This is such a fast way to get this, you know, even to get uneven edges or to drag out some colors. Now, at some point you're going to have to let this breathe. You're going to have to let it dry because if you don't, you're just going to keep adding soup, right? Soups of color. It's going to keep growing and you're not going to love the, um, the way it is, especially if you're going to add the turquoise before you add the turquoise, it has to dry. Otherwise you'll get the green. But if you want to see that done, I'm going to take a brush that doesn't require a lot of water and it's going to be heavy on the, um, heavy on the color and I'm just going to dip it in to the turquoise E color and I'm going to try and put some of the color in areas where there's some white. Now this is going to bleed, right? So if you don't want it to bleed too much or say, I don't know, let's take the striper brush. It's a dry brush right now. 
and I'm just gonna take my dry brush and bring this out now I'm not adding any more water because if I added water I would be adding to the soup this is a dry brush but see how nice that is and that's how I kind of start to get some of this effect without it's like mixing the paper mixing the color on paper rather than having it not you know just turn into a soup and blend too much now I'm gonna wet this I'm gonna get a little more color and I'm just gonna kind of roll it now this is dry paper if you want to maintain these these edges you definitely want to do dry paper and I'm just gonna wiggle it around and then I can literally just mess it up remember this is loose painting so I don't want you to try and make it what it's not you have to make it just kind of messy a little bit you know let it just be explosive and fun and you know without restraint I love this you know when I was painting in college I was doing a lot of commissions and everything I had to do was so restrained everything was just all about what the uh, client wanted and I was doing really really detailed like 60 70 80 hours very large scale uh, urban paintings and building paintings things of people's properties uh, for builders and I did a lot of work I did it for years and it was it was really great and really fun and literally I mean I think I made sometimes twenty thousand dollars on a painting but it was you know after you do that and it's so tedious it's great but at the same time you eventually get to a point where you're just like let me just let go <laughs> and do something else so see how I'm just kind of going back in with this this is a Escoda size 2 Prado Barcelona uh, script brush I love this brush it's great I got it in a in a set with some other brushes and I'm just kind of dragging my paint out you see this there you go look at that go back in as this is drying and maybe add a little more depth of color go on the side of your brush I mean remember it's a flower you just want to have fun and the more you can kind of mess with it and mess it up the nicer it's going to look now I'm getting some of this brilliant color built up and then after it dries you can go back in and even add more color to it all right so that's that one sweet right beautiful just as simple as that uh, since we have the blue well maybe I'll do let me just do I'll jump on here and do a pink one with the flat brushes because we used a round brush uh, you know what we didn't use that. here let's do this we're gonna take this round brush that doesn't require a lot of water it's an aqua elite we rinse it out I have three by the way I always keep three waters one for my blues one for my yellows and one for my uh, just clear and that way if I'm using if I want to rinse off the blue I go here if I want to rinse off the yellows or the reds I go here and then I rinse it one more time in my clear water so three is my key uh, let's take a little bit of yellow again because I really love yellow. Do we have about some cad yellow? And we're going to saturate the brush like this. We're going to roll. Okay, so this one, since we're going to use a pink because we haven't done that yet, let's do a flower like this. So say the center of the flower is here. You're going to use the side of the brush and you're gonna roll like this and roll like this ooh look at how pretty that is isn't that beautiful then you're gonna think about where else this might need to be in your flower like are you looking at your flower downwards and if you are then maybe you need to finish off that side right and then I'm just gonna do like a little star there or if you're doing a side of a flower maybe it's gonna be like you roll it 
and then you roll it again. See what I mean? And hang on. So this is going to be the bottom of the flower and this is going to be the top where the light is. So we're going to rinse this out. See how easy this is? I mean, you might just possibly be overworking things. Um, what can we put with this? Let's do Quinn Magenta on one because that was really insane and so pretty. Um, how about we just make sure I don't have too much. Remember, this is an intense brush. And I'm just going to roll it in the center just to give myself that look of those beautiful flowers. Look at that. Hello. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, really, literally, you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to touch that. Let's use a, uh, on this one, let's use, how about some Sennelier? red that's just a gorgeous color it's one of my favorites so pretty so again this is a brush that doesn't require a lot of water right it doesn't hold a ton and we're going to roll it here look at that so beautiful and then i'm taking some of the color and literally just filling in that bottom to kind of create that space, you know? And then here, I'm just going to do this just to create some of the center. And then we'll wipe off our brush a little bit and I'm probably going to use some of the intense color. Maybe we'll just dry it a tad and let's create the shape here with a little bit of a shadow. And we'll come out with some more of the flower. So see, by rolling, and again, if it gets too messy, you can always draw it back. I like some of this magenta, so I'm going to use some of that. You can always draw it back. A little bit of a little bit of your um, cloth or paper towel. Isn't this beautiful? So you see what I mean? So now I'm kind of creating this, this area here with my flower. I've got like this all going on. Now, what I want to do is I don't want this to be like such a perfect line. So I am now going to create some edges on my flower by adding a little bit more of the color. Look at that. So pretty. Okay, so we have different flowers going on. Now let's take the striper brush just so that you can see one use of your striper brush. We'll rinse it out. And I'm going to take a green. Um, literally, it can be pretty much any green that you like or you can mix. I'll show you how to do that too. So. Striper brush. Oh, freak out. Look at that. Oh my goodness. The looser, the better. That is awesome. And if I hold it really, really loosely, I can drag this around. Just add a little water. Okay. Now, uh, let's take, rinse this out, get a little bit of the yellow in here, get the yellow involved. Because, you know, I don't often think that these things need to be one color. I feel like if I have a lot of color going on in here, then I should really pull some of this color through here in a very, very messy way. Wet my brush. Look at that. Beautiful. Where was my green? I'm starting to mess up my greens. Oh, so gorgeous. Look at that. Now this leaf is going here. Okay. This is looking good. 
looking good really nice and sloppy and of course like i could even take some more yellow and now we could really go crazy you guys see me do a lot of this stuff i can just start messing it up going right through it taking a little water and dragging through and this creates this nice um, background that you're always looking at and then the dagger brush again watch this this is interesting okay so i'm going to take the dagger brush it's kind of wet and i'm literally going to smear smear the paint before it dries and now i've just saved some of my light but i'm also using i'm messing up some of the perfection to get these nice backgrounds just real quick you don't have to plan anything so if you've got a really good flower and you're like what do I do with the background well just take one of the colors out of the flower and just try to mess it up a little bit look at how cool that looks I mean you can always go back in you know and do more especially with this dagger brush I love this dagger brush it's great how cool is that isn't this fun? This is the most fun. Literally, this is the most fun I have um, painting is when I do stuff like this. Okay, so we needed a uh, something. So let, let me show you how to put in a uh, stem with the dagger brush. So I'm just going to kind of, well, this one holds a lot of water, right? So I have it pretty wet. It doesn't have to be super, super wet, but it doesn't have to be super dry either. I'm just going to grab some of my green. Oh, I know what to do. Hang on. We're going to make one. So we're going to grab some yellow and I'm literally doing that. Let's rinse my dagger brush out and let's grab a little blue because blue and yellow make green, right? Now this one is probably going to feel really advanced, I guess, um, for some people because the dagger brush is so, so loose. I love it. I think anything that makes me get really sloppy because I can always go back once this is dry and I can go back and like, you know, get more accents in. Like right now, I'm just going to take some more of this bright beautiful color and kind of encourage some of these beautiful sweeps look at that that's really cool and if I want to remove some I mean literally if you're working on some really good paper you can remove that is so beautiful see this is really pretty to me and this wasn't even a planned piece it's, I mean this is just the demo right um so what did i use the flat brush okay let's flip this around and we're going to give you a flat brush one okay so i have a wet flat brush and a dry flat brush so real fast here so we don't want to spend a ton of time just doing these we want to get painting right you guys want to get out there and get painting so let's wet my floppy flat brush and wet my um, other flat brush just in case I don't know what you guys have so I think it's better to use both so that you can see and let's just go into that blue again this is with the tighter flat brush you can see how it just grabs a hold of the paint so because it grabs a hold of the paint you know you're not going to get really a loose style so we're going to use it for a stem like that. And then we're going to use it to get some crazy marks. And there we go. So that's the, the shape of the petal. And now I'm going to work within my white space. And just drag it around look at that add a little bit to the center 
maybe give it a little more color in here but don't overpaint it and don't overdo it guys you know so that's a really beautiful flower if we want to expand it we can wet our brush down just a little bit more and perhaps even I don't know maybe do a smaller shape back here smaller shape back there okay there you go you want to add a little bit of background wet your brush down and go around then just blot and now you have the background as well look at that and that's a monochromatic you want a little more detail then get the color more intensely on your brush and don't use a very very wet brush on very very wet paper wait till it dries although i'm kind of doing the opposite right now but i'm seeing the areas that Tell me you don't want to take this class, right? This class is going to be so much fun. I do so many of these. Look at that. Now I painted that um, pseudo leaf there because it's going over the already wet paper. So it's going to blend out just a little bit. And remember our friendly dagger brush. I'm going to bring it back in just to mess things up a little bit just by doing that. So if you feel like you have too much structure, you can always use your dagger brush to loosen things up for you and then go back in with a little more paint and do anything. Now, another really good thing to do with a brush that doesn't have a lot, that doesn't hold a lot of water is to remove color. So we're just going to wipe this off and I can shape, shape this out if I wanted to. See that? Pretty cool. I want to get a little more shape in here. When I've lost some of my shapes, I can just add my shapes back in. Let's use the floppy brush next. The floppy brush is going to give you like a different effect. So I'm going to start with the yellow. And I'm just going to just flop it around. Beautiful. Okay, let's get our second color. Let's use some blue because it always looks really weird for me. I'll just keep using the same blue just in case. And now this is not dry. So if I wanted to wait for it to be dry, um, it would be a little different, but it's not dry. So I'm literally just going to lay the color in. See, so I'm going to go here and I'm just doing this. Now you can see the difference when the, when it's a floppy brush that holds a lot of water, it gives you a lot looser, more watery kind of look, but it's a nice effect still. Now, if I wanted to go a little more brilliant then you take a brush that doesn't hold as much water or you dry this brush off more and you just use continue to use the sides and see the sides make this nice shape it's better i feel it's a little easier for you to get these really good results in loose flowers by brushes that you wouldn't normally use for this because you would probably grab around and then you wouldn't get texture you know, unless you rolled it, but still we did the rounds and you saw that it's a much different texture, but look at the beautiful texture there on this one from this. And I can even mess it up a little bit, let it dry. Um, I'm going to go down here and just kind of support these leaves. Okay, let's rinse this one out. And what else would I do? I don't know. I probably, with me, I like a lot more color. And I think if you're here, you probably like the fact that I like a lot more color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add 
So literally, I'm just dragging along, guys. Now in the center of this, I mean, you could, you could just take the corner and just add something. Just to give it a little more structure. You can also go back in and as it's drying, add some layers, you know, like if I remove some color and then go behind some of these whites and add the layers like it's the bottom of the flower. And then literally just remove, see what I mean if I remove the negative space there? So I'm kind of painting negative space a little bit. Look at that. Okay beautiful going back in here we can do more you can fill my flower in a little bit i don't know you can fiddle and play until you get something nice yeah it's really pretty all right so there are some flowers for you and how to use some of these things now remember the sloppy the big brushes if you wanted to do um, something with these this is the prado one makes an interesting petal shape. I can even mix a little more color with it and drag that in. Add another color beside it and now I've got a nice really loose shape. If it gets too wet just dry it out. This one, see, it's really all you need because it's very, very juicy still. Now the other one is even juicier. If you feel like, okay, this is a great example. If this is getting too soppy, just literally wipe it back up and start again, either after it dries or just make it a little bit bigger so that you can control it on the paper. Because once you, once you draw that paper, you know, you're going to get a much different effect. So I'm kind of drawing an area that I want a little more detail in. And I'm pulling these, these leaves out using just pure paint. Cool, huh? There we go. Let's wet our brush down. Add a little yellow. So pretty. Um, and then the very sloppy, big, big brush. Uh, let's get this color here and get it down here. A little more wet. See how much different it is? So I'm like kind of layering in some of the petals. Mm, I don't know. It's kind of like an orchid a little bit. And that's why, if you notice, I get the best results with the sloppier, floppier brushes. This one still has a point, you know? So don't be afraid. Um, I know a lot of beginners go with like the silver brushes and they swear by them, but you know, it really will hinder you. I actually don't like the silver brushes at all because uh, when I tried them and I remember a long time ago and I just thought, oh my God, these are so expensive for what they are. And to me, they will just wreck you having 
you know, a unique uh, look in loose, loose watercolors. I think they're really difficult to use and I just really love the more professional brushes. Okay, look at how pretty that is. Um, again, we can take some out and just let it dry and then go back in. Like if it were dry, I would even go back in and maybe take some of this beautiful blue and try to give it, you know, some of these little accents in different areas. Maybe even pull it through would be really cool. It's got to dry a little bit more, but yeah, that's really cool. Just to kind of give it a little more purple. This is mixing on paper, by the way. That's when it's still wet and you're going to mix on paper. So I'm just taking the blue. I'm not making the purple in my palette. I'm just letting it combine naturally right on the paper so I can get a really organic effect. Isn't that pretty? This is the script brush, by the way. So ideas for flowers, I will link uh, below. All of my students have complete access to all of my Google photos because I go on walks with my dogs every day and we have amazing flowers here locally in Canada all over the streets. So I take all those pictures. You guys are welcome to use them. I do format the pictures in um, like painting ready format. So you don't really, you know, you can actually paint right from those photos you're not looking at it saying i wish it was you know a little cropped in or i wish it was this way they're just ready to go they are the photos that i use to get my inspiration to so we are using the same things you guys are welcome to use them all right so there you go let me give you some close-ups so here is a very very wet one so beautiful mixed on paper this is just two colors right there this was our one of our flat brushes with just yellow and blue making some of the green this was a monochromatic one really really pretty love it this was a um the prado what is it? this is the 12 prado by escoda for a nice loose finish this is our big flower that we did with our dagger brush so we used the dagger brush three quarter inch and we used, I think we used this one, right? This, this round, which is a 12 long round by Aqua, it's Aqua Elite Princeton. And then this one, we rolled the round brush, you know, that didn't require a lot of, didn't, it holds enough water, but not too much water. So it doesn't dilute the paint. And then we mixed colors on this bottom to get this very loose kind of branchy look. And then this one we rolled again. So there you go, you got some different shapes and then I showed you how to use some of these brushes and not be afraid uh, to just try different things. If you wanna see how these turn out, I might actually post them as prints or something on my website at JacquelineJacks.com. Uh, most likely I'll just do actual paintings instead of this because I don't even think I can cut these up, but they do turn out really, really amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up and come take my class. I think you'll really, really love painting loose florals and loosening up your style. I think it's really important and it seems like so many, many of you guys really want to do it. And I totally encourage it because you can get all of these really, really pretty uh, different styles accomplished just by learning these techniques. I mean, look at how pretty these turn out and just going a little deeper. So I'm doing these kind of demonstrations all in the class where I'm uh, telling you what colors I use and how to get these beautiful effects. So pretty. I love them. All right. Have a great day. I hope you guys stay safe and happy painting. I'll talk to you again soon.